out here on the field of Oshkosh. Uh, we've been following this project for a bit now. Uh, over in the UK, and this thing actually made it over to the United States this year. So Tim, introduce yourself real quick and we'll talk about Talk Shop. Uh, I'm Tim from Nuncats and uh, this is our cruiser behind us. It's an electric cruiser. It, it is an electric cruiser. That's, that's what makes it even more uh, unique. Yep, it's an electric cruiser which uh, comes with a story because otherwise why would you do this? Why would you, know? you do this? Uh, we would do this because we know a lot of people in the developing world who don't have any access to healthcare or medication because you can't walk across swamps and rivers and deltas. And for those l really important last mile jobs, the technology's ready and it has the big benefit of the long service life. You don't have to find good fuel, you don't have to worry about spare parts, you can just plug it in and run it. And to these people, you know, we Senegal, five miles between two clinics. In uh, Uganda, it's 15 mile resupply trip. And they lose patients because those trips take too long over the ground. So battery electric doesn't do most of what people want to do in aviation, obviously. But when there's jobs that important that it could do, we figured it should be a capability that exists. And no one else was doing it, so we did it. So and that is. So that idea itself is exciting, but also what is exciting, this is the first and only truly made it to the air, I believe, functioning Zenith Electric. Yeah, I mean this one we did our program. first Yeah, we did our first flight January last year, I guess. Uh, since then, we've done a load of upgrades on the battery safety systems, the controls, uh, new sort of quadrant style throttle, all sorts of testing. The last round of flight testing is about 20 hours, there or thereabouts, just to prove the endurance and the edges of the flight envelope so that we could be confident that the technology really will do the job it can do and we could come here with a product that it obviously is niche. But you know, the high school build programs, what endurance do they need? They want to do a lap of the pattern when they've built it. Right. We right. Just, just had a retired airline pilot sign the paperwork because he's been flying long haul for more years than he can remember. He just wants to be able to fly half an hour of an evening and he wants to support what we're doing. So All right, well, I'm going to get out of frame and let him walk and talk around the aircraft to get a tour. All right, Tim. So first, I know you wanted to explain why this, this machine isn't totally flyable at the moment. Uh, what, yeah. what did it take to get it here? Uh, what, it, what? Uh, we had to finish the test flight program, strip it so it fitted in a crate 18 foot long, 5 foot 6 by 5 foot 7, and it got caught up in some tech outages. So instead of arriving the Thursday before the show, it arrived at lunchtime Sunday. So our four day setup was one afternoon. So the flapper ons are still in the tent, the brakes aren't hooked up, and uh, the high voltage looms are over there somewhere. But you know, the EPU's hang off, hanging off the front of it. It's built enough that we can talk people around it and show people what it's all about. Okay, so since we're on the back side of this anyway and we can kind of see where the fuel tanks would normally go, explain what is in there instead. Well, to, to make sure that this behaves pretty much like it did on the plans, uh, we've got two battery modules in each wing and then two more up front. So the only modification to the airframe per se is that we put an auxiliary spar in uh, across the fuel tank and obviously where the batteries live, that's held on with AN525s in nut plates as opposed to being riveted. Um, and the rest of it is a completely standard cruiser. That's pretty much the only mod. The rest of it just bolts on the front where, where the firewall forward package normally does. The reason we've got that accessible, one of the standard problems with a normal EV is that the batteries are so built into it that you're stuck with what batteries you got. We've probably compromised the design to the tune of about 12 pounds in weight to make the batteries bolt in and on plugs. So the batteries that we're delivering for next year are about 40% better than these. And the next generation after that will just be, if when the batteries come available, you know, we'll phone everyone who's got the Mark 1 and see if they want the Mark 2. And it's half an hour of plugs and bolts and you can put the better batteries in. We'll take the old batteries and put them in solar microgrids and use that to grow the charging infrastructure and you can keep having the latest and greatest batteries because that technology is moving pretty quick. Right, so as far as the panel's concerned, obviously controls wise you haven't got mixture or carb heat or anything like that. Single lever throttle control, we've done this little 3D printed quadrant style one just because the ergonomics of it suit the test pilot who's doing all the flying for us. Trim and flaps are on your fingertips. 
Other than that, Garmin G5, it's a primary flight instrument. Uh, the UK rules require us to have backup ASI and altitude if you've got uh, an EFIS as your primary flight instrument. Uh, this display here is what we call the EPUD, uh, because I love an acronym. That's the electric power unit display. Okay. So that, that does your, your temperature and pressures and revs and state of charge, time remaining calculations. That carries the, the any warnings from the battery system, things of that nature. Um, on the other side there, other than that, sorry, we've got you know, radio transponder, we've got a tablet that runs our nav. Fairly standard breaker panel, the big HV kill thing in the middle, I think we've discussed before years ago. That's um, mo probably just for the prototype. That is, if you think you're gonna end up in the trees or in a lake and you really don't wanna have a high voltage battery system anywhere near you, if you flick both those switches, all the batteries come off the bus. So you've only got low voltage around you. And on the far side of the cabin there, you can just see two of the high voltage conductors. That's what takes the power from the wing batteries through to the firewall forward package. I assume that's got to be really, really well insulated against vibration because if that touched metal, you're yes. going to have a meltdown. Uh, it, there's about three safety systems would have to fail as well as it rubbing through, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all double insulated, screen shielded cable. Um, and the HV system's obviously isolated from the uh, airframe. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys want to join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel, just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel, sign up at several different levels, so check that out. So moving from the controller and then through the firewall into what else is firewall forward? Well, um, standard favorite, you know, the propeller that is most favored for the airframe. So it's just a standard ground adjustable uh, three blade. Firewall forward, we've got two more battery modules. So there's two in each wing and two here, six total. Underneath there is the motor controller, electronic speed controller or motor drive, depending on what industry you're from. Um, charge receptacle, it's a standard one borrowed out of the auto industry, which lives under this panel. And then round the other side, you've got the cooling circuit, the drive and the motor are liquid cooled, so they've got their own radiator, just runs normal glycol. Um, and the batteries are air cooled, so th there's no glycol for those. And uh, this is a cowl which uh, came out of the molds before it was dry and uh, had a window cut in it for Oshkosh. So excuse the finish on that, if you could please. My father would never forgive me for sending this out into the public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other than that, so it's what, a standard TA750. So during the uh, the progress of this this project here, what was one of the biggest hurdles for you getting this system into the aircraft? Paperwork. Well, actually, no. Getting it into the aircraft was fine. Uh, getting it into the air was the, was the bit that took all the effort because we're based in the UK, and uh, you know, in in the USA, experimental is a sticker. In, in the UK, it's like this much paperwork and an insurance bill with about this many more zeros on the end of it. But in terms of the integration, yeah, we are, to make sure it's simple and low cost, we are doing a lot of integration rather than invention. The, the bits we've done a lot of work on are things like the composites for battery casings. So if that one in 40 million failure does happen, it doesn't actually damage the airframe before you can land it. We've done quite a lot of work on that. Um, otherwise, it, it's mostly just Boring integration engineering. It's so integration meaning that some of these parts are off the shelf, uh, off the or, or, or is this a uh, of your own? Can you share what some uh, of the parts are? So yeah, I mean the the motor and the drive are the same ones that Pipistrel have certified in the Velus Electro. Uh, so that's you know uh, uh, a big step towards making the approvals easier, at least we hope. Um, but we reconfigure the software and we run them harder than Pipistrel do, but we've got a bigger, heavier cooling system. Um, the cooling system is all us. The battery packaging is all us. The battery management system, uh, we don't make our own chips. We buy the modules and configure them and make them do what we want to do. Uh, the display and control unit is actually out of uh, an industrial safety background, sort of big earth moving machinery. Um, and we just write the code for it and design the, the user experience and all the CAN bus stuff. 
The battery safety systems, uh, we use the same sensors that Rolls-Royce used in the ACL race plane. We just configure them how we want them and make sure they work on our buses. Um, and other than that, it's all the normal, you know, motor mount, stress analysis that goes with that, and all the, all the normal stuff you do with any firewall forward package. Okay, so now this has had its first flight and many flights after that. You're in the test phase of it. Where do you go from here? What's the next step for Nuncats? Um, well, for this one, uh, we pull it apart, put it back in the box and send it home. Um, the next phase of testing is to clean up, because th this is what my colleagues are calling the mega drag configuration. No doors, big tires. So we're going to put the doors on it, we're going to put the aero mods on it and see how much of a difference that makes. Um, and then we're going to use this as the fleet leader towards ASTM LSA um, approvals. Probably somewhat informally, but we have to at least do it for our own basis and for people like Senegal, where that's what they're interested in. And we've got five people have signed up to want one for next year. So um, we take on maybe two more guys. We start upping the tooling and we get ready to be back here in 12 months with five crates with other people's names on them. Okay, well, somebody wanted to check out Nuncats other than your website right there. Are you posting uh, at least uh, major milestones in the company uh, on yeah, social? Yeah, yeah, um, we, we, we use Facebook quite a bit because that seems to suit the target audience for the, for the aircraft, in, in this market at least. A um, little bit of stuff on Instagram, uh, but there's, there's a news channel on the website. While we've been getting ready for this, it's all been a bit quiet, but when we get back to the UK and we get her back in the hangar, We'll, we'll start doing more regular updates towards, as we move towards the production batch of six of them for delivery next year. We'll keep people up to speed on where we're going. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. And thanks to Tim Bridge for giving us a tour around his all-electric Zenith. Follow Tim at nuncats.org.